So as a little boy, what do you think it was about the golf course that attracted you? Well, I don't know. It was right down the street from me. And uh, back then, you know, there weren't that many golf courses and there was always people playing golf. And I just thought it was a beautiful place. You know. Did your dad play? Yeah, he played. And so was that something you got to do with him? Spend some special time with him? Or? No, actually I didn't. He was a railroad man, so uh, very little time, actually no time as a child. We used to have a father and son golf tournament once a year. I played in that for a couple of times. Did you win? Uh, no, actually the time I won, I played with, uh, my dad played uh, with my brother Mike and I played with, at the time, uh, Sheriff Carl Griffin. And we won that year, me and the Sheriff did. That's very cool. And so what led you to Baker Park? <laughs> well, I actually, um, Tried to get it uh, back in the early 90s, and um, somebody else ended up getting it. Um, I wish I would have got it back in the 90s because um, it would have been a lot cheaper to fix the stuff that I fixed out there. Mm -hmm. And um, I was awarded a contract uh, at the end of 2013, you know, by the city. But if I would have got it, you know, like. I think it was 1991, two or three, something like that. And, um, you know, if I would have got it back then, you know, I could have done a whole lot more with it, you know, a lot sooner. But it was in pretty bad shape when I got it. What's your vision for it, though? You've, you've probably done so much up to this point, but I'm sure you have a vision of where you'd like to see Bacon Park. Yeah, it, it's solid. I mean, we. Um, they've done a great job out there, great staff out there, uh, great people work there. Um, we have Restoration of the Year Award um, two years ago, uh, best golf course in Savannah, you know, I think the last three years. But I, I see it, you know, when I was a child, you know, you had either played football, basketball, or baseball, and golf was always last. And um, I was a little kid, I mean, there's no way I could play football. I think I played football in the fourth grade and that was it for me. Just enough to have my picture taken. But, uh, you get a jersey. That's about right. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, back then, kids that couldn't play those primary sports were on the golf course. And, um, you know, golf is just crazy what it costs to play golf. And, um, you know, you have all these places like, you know, the landings and all these developments, you know, where it costs so much money to, you know, be a member and stuff like that. So there was really no places that kids could play golf. And, um, and a lot of kids ended up, uh, and still do, I mean, so many kids on soccer fields. And they play a lot of soccer. It's a great sport for kids that can't play football, basketball, and baseball. I don't really know any kids that play football and soccer, you know, but soccer's great for kids. Kids need to, you know, burn calories. Kids need to burn energy, you know. <clears throat> but, um, you know, we, um, we have suffered immensely in the golf industry because, you know, for about um, 20 years, maybe 25 years, kids have not been introduced to golf. We had the first tee in Savannah, it was a, you know, all over the country they had first tee. And some places it's done real well and some it hasn't. It didn't do very well in Savannah. It did at one time, but you know, it's, um, it's more to it than that. I mean, um, so many parents work today and um, they do a lot of work and uh, they don't have time for their children. And uh, golf is a time commitment as well. When I grew up, it was um, Tommy Rowell ran uh, the golf course. And uh, we had a great guy that ran the clubhouse. His name was Shorty Cooper. And uh, a lot of people took advantage of Shorty, but they would, uh, drop their kids off at 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning and pick them up at 8 o'clock at night. They knew they were safe. They trusted you. And, um, yeah. and if you uh, <clears throat> look at different uh, 
people my age, they all have similar stories of their experience at Bacon Park, you know, as a babysitter place. And, um, and back then we could play golf for $50 a year, which is crazy. If you ever listen to the documentary on Bryn, um, Bryn, Ben Crenshaw, um, you know, in Austin, Texas, grew up on a very similar, almost identical to what we did, public golf course where there was one guy that took care of all the kids. And that a documentary, I mean, I could relate to that so well because, you know, um, we still have that at Bacon Park today. You know, kids are dropped off there and, you know, we take care of them. And um, it's just not as many kids as it used to be. Like they have a little summer program, but um, we used to have a, a junior blitz when I was a kid. There would be 100 kids out there on any given day. The only tips we had on the weekends, you couldn't play till after two o'clock. That's because he had seven blitzes that played on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs>